like country music, don't you, Senator Cotton? <laughs> I do, John. Now that you're a resident of Kansas, you must like it as well. Oh, oh I love country music, and, and we're playing it today kind of in honor of the SEC primary uh, next Tuesday, so we have to play country music. We could, we could play Arkansas music. Is it something we, <laughs> should, something we should play in particular that you like? John, Johnny Cash, born in Arkansas. Johnny Cash. All right. Later today, Adam, later we're playing Johnny Cash. We're going to do it. Okay. But um, several things to ask you about. First of all, do you miss me? I miss you every single day, John. I figured you did. I miss all my I miss all my friends over in the house. Okay, all right, okay, uh, good. Right, but you've answered everything correctly so far, so this is good. But now, Apple, where are you on the whole Apple issue, and uh, and why? Well, I certainly think that Apple should comply with a lawful court order to help the FBI access the cell phone of the San Bernardino terrorists. That's a simple question. Every company, every individual has an obligation to provide evidence when lawfully ordered by a court. But it does get to the bigger question of encryption. Um, I understand why Apple and Facebook and Google and other companies have developed the kind of encryption that protects very important, very personal information that we all have. Uh, Almost anyone who has a smartphone keeps emails, text messages, photographs, financial information, uh, health information, and so forth on their phone. And, And we want to be able to protect Americans' data security and their privacy. But at the same time, we want to make sure that terrorists and the worst kind of criminals, pedophiles and um, drug traffickers aren't using that technology to harm our society. So, so we need to work together, Silicon Valley firms and law enforcement, to try to reach some kind of technological solution that's going to work for Americans, both in protecting their own privacy, but also protecting their security. Do you have any concern? I know some people um, on this Apple issue uh, believe that with this one phone, it's okay, but they don't sort of don't want to set a precedent that it could be used in 75 other phones or cases or something like that. Do you have a view on that? Well, I certainly think that in this case, when you're dealing with a terrorist attack, where there could be information about follow-on terrorist attacks, um, or, for instance, in the Garland, Texas shooting, where we still haven't been able to access the text messages on a smartphone of one of the shooters, that these companies need to work with us. Um, going forward, I think we need to have a real conversation about whether we want to tre- uh, treat data uh, the way we treat telecom companies. Uh, John, as you may know, there's a law called the Communication Assistance for Law Enforcement Act passed over 20 years ago that requires telephone companies to design systems that will allow, subject to a lawful court order, a wiretap on a telephone. So if the FBI or your local sheriff's department gets a lawful court order from a judge, they can tap into the phone of, say, a drug dealer or a network of human traffickers. I think we will need to have a conversation as a society uh, if we want to impose a similar kind of obligation of citizenry on data companies as well. Okay. Uh, let's move from this to the Supreme Court and the vacancy on the Supreme Court. We saw that all the Republicans on the Judiciary Committee have unanimously said that they will not hold a hearing. And then today we get the, I guess, a leak or whatever report that amongst the people that the president is considering um, nominating would be the current Republican governor of Nevada, Brian Sandoval. Um, does the if someone, Brian Sandoval, or a name like that gets nominated, does that change things? No, John, it doesn't change the principle at stake. I don't think the Senate should have a hearing or a vote until after the election, because President Obama has acted in such a fashion as to not warrant a vote for his nominee in this election year. These, this is very rare when both the White House and the Senate, and now the White House, is at stake in an election year. We should let the people decide this this fall. And then we and then after the election, we can move forward. Um, It's also, though, that President Obama has not just consistently disregarded the Constitution himself and faced numerous nine to nothing decisions by the Supreme Court. But the Senate Democrats in 2013 broke the rules of the Senate specifically to pack the courts in the District of Columbia, the second most important court in the land, by some lights so they could avoid Senate action for legislative matters and rubber stamp Barack Obama's executive uh, action agenda. So I think it would be irresponsible for us as an institution to reward that kind of action with a Supreme Court confirmation in an election year when Barack Obama and the Senate Democrats have explicitly broke the rules of the Senate in the past 
to avoid congressional action. Okay, let me play uh, devil's advocate with you on that, if I can, Senator Cotton. Uh, suppose that it was uh, that the president did nominate somebody like Brian Sandoval, who was a, was a moderate. And so looking at the political reality, you could have President Clinton next time who would likely – uh, appoint someone to the left of that. Now, yes, you could have President Trump or President Rubio or President whomever, President Cruz, whatever, uh, who would appoint somebody to the right. But, but, but um, it, it, you just the political risk of perhaps having Hillary appoint somebody does that <clears throat> tempt you at all? No, John. Again, because what's at stake here is the principle. This is not a commentary on Governor Sandoval or any of the other nominees that you might hear float in the next few days or that the president might ultimately nominate. It's the principle of the matter. And it just reinforces the stakes of this election. It's very rare that the American people get a say in the who controls the White House and the Congress and the Supreme Court all in the same year. But I think that's something that we should uh, let the American people decide this fall. Okay. Gitmo. Um, president says he's uh, once, which he said in 2008, actually, when he was running, that he wants to close it and <clears throat> move the um, the detainees somewhere in the United States. Uh, first of all, do we have we ever heard where I heard Leavenworth, Kansas? Is that still where they're thinking of where he would do it, or do we know? Well, the, the the main problem with Guantanamo Bay is that there are too many empty beds there. We have not been sending terrorists there for the last seven years, and that's hurt our national security. The president still has not specified where he would transfer the hardest core of these hardcore detainees at Guantanamo in the United States. He has floated some possibilities, places like Leavenworth in Kansas, places like uh, the Brig in South Carolina, or a handful of prisons in Colorado. Wherever they go, though, I think it would be very dangerous. It would give them access to our federal courts to use against us. It would deprive us of ongoing intelligence value. It would threaten the prisoners and the guards at those facilities, as well as the communities around them. And the justification for closing Guantanamo Bay is just fully specious. They claim that it is a source of recruiting for new terrorists. It simply is not. The Islamic State puts out a glossy magazine on a routine basis. It's fully available for anyone to read on the Internet, and it virtually never mentions Guantanamo Bay. Terrorists around the world, like the Islamic State and al-Qaeda, want to kill Americans not because we have detainees at Guantanamo Bay, but for who we are. We are freedom's home, and we are freedom's defender. We had no one there on 9-11, and they still attacked us, or any of the other terrorist attacks for decades before 9-11. We need to use Guantanamo Bay for what it is, a modern, secure, humane detention facility that is necessarily incident to the conduct of the global war on terror. In, in 30 seconds, Senator Cotton, does the president have any way to do this without Congress voting it? For the, At least until the end of September, the law currently prohibits the president from, make, from transferring any of those detainees to the United States. I expect once again this year, for the eighth time in his presidency, Congress on the annual defense bill will prohibit him again. So he would have to do so in direct violation of recently enacted law and contrary to what his military commanders have said. Okay, boy, I sure hope you uh, you guys do pass that legislation. Senator Tom Cotton from Arkansas, thank you very much. Stay with us, America on the Hugh Hewitt Show. 